Any time now for or debate. Today we're going to look at the situation in Israel and the Palestinian territories. Violence has flared up again this week with dozens of rockets fired into Israel and scores of targets in Gaza hit by the Israeli military. The latest rocket landed in an open air area near Beersheba, which required a more powerful, longer range rocket and is being seen somewhat as an escalation in the unrest. The military has once again hit back, hitting what we're being told is a cultural centre in Gaza City. So where might things go from here. Peace talks had been underway in Egypt with new hope, hope that progress was being made. So could things calm down again quickly or are we headed for all-out war? Well, to give us their opinions, we're joined from Gaza by uh, Mr. Mukhaimir Abu Saada, a professor of political scientist at Al-Azhar University. Thanks for your time. Also joining us from Tel Aviv, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, a former spokesperson for the Israeli Defence Forces. Thanks to both of you for being with us, Lieutenant Colonel Lerner. Uh, perhaps I'll start with yourself as that latest news we're getting is that the Israeli military has carried out another airstrike over Gaza City this this Thursday, apparently hitting a cultural center. So the military has yet to announce exactly what it was striking at this location. Uh, we can be sure what we've seen over the last 24 hours is a very um, crafted, designed plan of action to take out Hamas assets. Um, those assets which are part of the operations that they're conducting, uh, whether it's firing rockets, whether it's weapon storage, whether it's um, command and control positions or communications positions. These types of things are uh, being targeted. In order to send Hamas a clear message, um, you have a lot to lose in this confrontation. Um, you have to think well if you continue to try and conduct these rocket attacks against Israel. Uh, let me cross just so briefly to Mr. Abu Asada in Gaza. You're in Gaza. Can, what, have you, what do you know about that latest strike? Was it targeting another Hamas centre? Uh, there is no uh, Israeli justification for attacking and bombing a cultural center here in the middle of Gaza City. Uh, everybody knows this is a cultural center which uh, uh, basically uh, uh, present uh, 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 cultural events for the Palestinians in Gaza and has nothing to do with Hamas or the military wing of Hamas. And let me also allow Unless to it was being used by Hamas. Israel, if let's say they could have used that building, taken it over. <clears throat> I have no idea. Uh, all I know that this is in the center of Gaza City. It's a very crowded area with uh, Palestinian civilians uh, uh, in that area. There are no Hamas uh, military installations or any training camps for Hamas around that area. All I know that this is a building that is a cultural center that belongs to the Pal And also, as a matter of fact, there is uh, uh, an office for the uh, Egyptian community in the Gaza Strip, which is also housed in the same building, which was attacked and bound by Israel uh, uh, today. And let me just alert you and alert your guests that this is not the first incident. Israel last night bombed a house in the middle of Gaza City, which killed a pregnant woman and her 18-month child, and her husband is in severe conditions in being treated in the hospital right now. Let, uh, uh, let, this is, the, I mean, every time... Well, let, let me put that question to Lieutenant Colonel yeah, Peter Lerner. Um, L Lieutenant Colonel, uh, hearing there from the professor in Gaza City saying that you might be targeting Hamas, but it's civilians that are paying the heavy price. Absolutely. The civilians are always paying the price, whether it's Hamas shooting rockets at Israeli civilians or Hamas hiding behind those civilians, those poor people in Gaza that are literally being held hostage by this terrorist organization. But even the realization if, even that if Hamas ha is using these people. Even if Hamas, let's accept that Hamas, even if they are using it's the civilians, it's the Israeli military that is carrying out the action. It's still breaking international law. In that sense, you're so still targeting civilians. Absolutely not. Over the course of the last 24 hours, the IDF has announced that they've conducted some 180 con uh, uh, precision strikes against locations which are involved in Hamas's terrorist industry. The, rea the realization that this industry must be destroyed um, is actually up to Hamas. They have to decide if they want to continue 
the aggression against the state of Israel. Israel doesn't want to have another war with, uh, with Gaza. I think the reality on the ground is one where over the last two months there have been extreme efforts on behalf of the Egyptians and the United Nations to try and come to some sort of situation to alleviate the humanitarian uh, situation in Gaza on one hand, and on the other hand, improve the security situation and Israel's legitimate security concerns that we have from the terrorist organization in, in, okay. in Gaza Strip. And that needs to be ironed out. I think the coming out will show where it is actually going. Uh, across package, Professor Abu Saad in Gaza City. What do you think Hamas wants? Well, first, Eve, let me just remind your guest, uh, Colonel Lerner, that uh, uh, Israel knows very much where uh, where, the, where their uh, Hamas training camps and where are the bases of Hamas. And as it was mentioned by Israel today, that around 150 targets that belong to Hamas were targeted, but uh, there is no Israeli explanation for targeting this cultural center in the middle of Gaza City and also targeting a pregnant woman with her, with her 18 child last night. Anyway, uh, this is not this is this is uh, this did not start with Hamas uh, this started with the Israeli army when the Israeli army targeted uh, Palestinian uh, militant uh, uh, two days ago and killed two members of Hamas military wing is the Dean al-Qassam brigades but and Hamas did not respond that day because a high-level delegation from Hamas was inside Gaza and Hamas decided to retaliate yesterday but so it all started professor Abu by Saad Israel Saad two Saad days ago okay but professor Abu aside that we did have a hundred or so rockets fired to the other side. What do the Palestinian people think about that? Uh, well, let me put it to you this way. The Palestinian people are under Israeli occupation for the past 50 years. We are in Gaza under Israeli siege and blockade for the past uh, uh, 12 years. Uh, life here is unbearable. Uh, when you look at the, human, uh, the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip, it's going from bad to worse. Uh, poverty is about 70 percent of the 2 million Palestinians in Gaza live under poverty line. Uh, unemployment among the Palestinians, 44, as a result of this Israeli siege and blockade. And the Palestinian people, they would like to live as normal human beings. It's the Israeli occupation, the Israeli aggression against the Palestinian people who are not allowing the Palestinians to live a normal life. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, that blockade has been in place uh, for years now. It was aimed at bringing peace that clearly isn't working. Is it time to, to end the blockade, give civilians a rest and f come up with a new strategy? So the reality on the ground is that Hamas is actually controlling the ability to alleviate the situation. Instead of alleviating it, they prefer to shoot rockets. They don't want shipments of goods or anything. They want to shoot rockets at Israel. I think what my friend is actually saying is that, and, and rightly so, is you know Hamas is in charge of the Gaza Strip. They have to look out for the well-being and the um, development of the Gaza Strip. But instead of investing in that, they're investing in hundreds and thousands of rockets. They're, they're investing in tunnels, which are going nowhere. They're investing in uh, naval capabilities, which are only tools of death and destruction, something Israel can't accept. So I would suggest to my friend in Gaza, please go to Hamas. Please tell them to stop firing rockets at Israel because it won't get them anywhere. Israel is in a situation where it cannot accept being under uh, fire, cannot accept being targeted. Our civilians today running from one time, one moment to the next, every few minutes to the bomb shelters, just because Hamas doesn't like Israel being here. I'll tell you what, we're not going anywhere. The reality on the ground has to reflect that understanding, and Hamas needs to come to that conclusion. Israel is here to stay. Please, instead of investing in terrorism, invest in the life of the people of Gaza. Uh, they deserve it. Professor Abu Asada, what have you to say to that? Well, I truly uh, 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 say, uh, say that, yes, I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, Colonel's right to say that Israel does not accept launching of rockets from Gaza against Israel. But I want Colonel Lerner uh, to just imagine if Israel were under occupation for 50 years, and if Israel were under siege and blockade, and if Israel were under uh, 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 um, collective uh, punishment by, 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 by its neighbors, 
uh, uh, would, would Israel or will, will uh, Colonel Lerner accept this situation? It's this, this is all started as a result of Israel ig uh, ignoring international law, ignoring international humanitarian law and the Fourth Geneva Convention by targeting Palestinian civilians, by imposing collective punishment on two million Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. And uh, it, it, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, the Palestinians are, uh, uh, are not happy to see another flare of violence or eruption of violence between uh, Hamas and, and, and Israel. But uh, 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 let's say, as I mentioned to you earlier, it all started by Israeli bombardment of the Gaza Strip but two Professor, days ago, which killed two Palestinians. Professor and Abu Sayyad, is, however, uh, what is Hamas's strategy? Because these rockets are being fired during peace talks that we were, we were hearing were going very well. What's their strategy? That is uh, uh, completely true. Uh, yes, there have been advanced uh, back-channel negotiations between Hamas and Israel. Uh, carried out by the Egyptians and by the UN uh, envoy, uh, Mr. Uh, Nikolai Miladinov, who are trying to broker a long ceasefire or a truce between Hamas and Israel. And from what I know is that these back-channel negotiations have reached an advanced point, uh, uh, which we probably are uh, uh, where, where to see the, la the final touches on this deal. But uh, uh, unfortunately, violence erupted again. And as I mentioned to you, it all started by Israel two days ago when Israel killed two Palestinians. Let me and Hamas cross back to Lieutenant Colonel. To retaliate back. Look, Lieutenant Colonel Lerner, or the professor pointed out there that the economic restrictions on the Gaza Strip does predate Hamas and when, and when they came to power. I think what's important, though, to remember is Hamas came to power in 2007. And they had the ability to turn the Gaza Strip into a development. But Gaza was already under pressure economically before Hamas. That's all the more reason to invest in the people. But it, rather in, than invest, so all of these restrictions that Israel is enforcing, whether it's a maritime uh, blockade, because what happened? We've stopped ship after ship after ship of rockets being shipped to Gaza. We want. We don't want. More, ship, more rockets to come to Gaza. They've got enough anyway. So what's the solution On the other if hand, Ham we don't want uh, What's the solution? If Hamas stops rocket fire, is uh, Israel uh, willing uh, to let e economic benefits into Gaza? You know, the whole time Israel has been saying, Hamas, stop terrorism, invest in the people of, people of Gaza, and let's move forward. You know, the restrictions uh, um, and, uh, and the closure around the Gaza Strip, whether it's uh, movement, travel, access, uh, those are all a result of the security situation. You know, we have a neighbor here that is not willing to accept the fact that we live here. And instead of trying to develop a, a, a relationship, a neighborly relationship, they are hostile towards the state of Israel. Israel is sitting on its hands most of the time. And, and, and when we are pushed into a situation, into a corner, so to say, Hello, General, we will respond. Hello, no. You know, you wouldn't accept the reality of that. Let me just ask you, how worried should we be about this uh, recent flare-up of violence again? You know, could it calm down quickly, or has this completely scuppered those uh, truce talks? Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, first of all. I, I don't think so. I believe that the reality and the ritual that we are going, to, going through is something we've seen since the 30th of March, when Hamas initiated the exchanges on the fence. And every uh, few weeks uh, since then, we've had a flare-up of this type of violence. The problem is that we are always uh, uh, seem, we always seem to be on the brink of the conflict. So I would be very cautious in trying to predict where it is actually going. Uh, I think it could go either way. I think if one side makes a mistake, a fatal mistake, it could lead to an escalation. You know, the whole thing, the, the, the whole uh, events of the current 24 hours began uh, when uh, uh, IDF forces misidentified sniped would uh, fire towards them. And this reality is reality, and it is the dynamics of the religion that we need to be quite concerned with. Okay, let me just put that same question to Professor Abu Asada in Gaza. How worried are you uh, that this latest upsurge in violence uh, could turn things really in the wrong direction, bring us back towards 2014? Uh, to be honest with you, we are very worried. Uh, uh, this is the worst uh, escalation between Hamas and Israel since the end of 2014. 
uh, uh, war in, in the summer of 2014. Uh, last night, most of the two million Palestinians in Gaza were not able to sleep as a result of continued Israeli bombing of different areas in the Gaza Strip, mainly civilian populated areas. Uh, and and, uh, and, and all, all, it, it's very much well known that Gaza is overpopulated. It's a very small place with two million Palestinians. We do hope that this latest escalation it will be contained uh, very quickly by uh, outside uh, uh, mediators, either by Egypt or by the UN uh, envoy, Mr. Miladinov. But if that, if that, if that does not succeed, then, then un unfortunately we are might facing another uh, bloody military confrontation uh, between uh, Israel and the Palestinian resistance in Gaza. OK, well, let's end on that uh, note for a hope uh, that this will all uh, calm down quickly again and those uh, truce talks uh, continue. Uh, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you both very much for your time. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner and Professor uh, Mukar Abu Saada, thank you so much. Uh, that brings us to the end of this debate on France 24 and the end of this edition.